welcome to another episode of The Silly Kitchen. Today it's a big one. As you can see, there's a lot going on in front of me in terms of ingredients. Don't worry. It's all still super easy and super delicious, but I'm going all out for dinner. But what I really want to talk to you about is these guys right here. O&V Tasting Room. Uh, this episode is all about them. I'm going to link these guys in the episode. Uh, follow them on all the different social medias. Check their website out. Go into the store if you are in the area. Uh, but we are going to be featuring their product in today's recipes multiple recipes, lots of stuff going on here. So in terms of oil and vinegars, I have four different bottles here. Um, I decided to pick up a spicy garlic oil, uh, one of their traditional balsamic dark vinegars. I also picked up a garlic basil, uh, because who doesn't love garlic and basil? And hello, it is a perfect combination. And then last but not least, lemon and herb. It's um, kind of a classic uh, when you think of lemon and herb. Uh, it, it just brightens up tons of dishes. So there's lots of different things you can do with oils and vinegars. So let's start with recipe number one. Now, technically it's not a full recipe. Uh, all I'm gonna do is make my own crostinis because I have two recipes that I'm making today that will need these. Now, you can go buy a bag of crackers or crostini baguettes, whatever it is, but this is gonna be, first of all, way more flavorful because we're using our own oils and our own flavor combinations that we want. It's also gonna be a lot more cost effective because a little baguette from the bakery is gonna cost you like two bucks uh, as opposed to buying a bag of crackers half broken for, I don't know, $4.99, whatever it is these days. So to make your own crostinis, just get your bread knife out and make small slices. Now I like to slice mine on an angle. You can go straight, you can do whatever you want, uh, but just do the entire baguette up because we are gonna flavor these Stick them in the oven. Oh, and that's it. <laughs> so pretty easy start to the day. So just lay them out all on a pan. I just chopped up the entire baguette, as many as I can fit on a dish. And just set them aside here. Now I made a little bit of a vest, so I'll have to clean that up uh, before we, oh, I got some on the floor too. Before we, um, go to the next recipe, but let's finish this one up. So just on a little side bowl, what I'm gonna do is I wanna make a couple spicy crostinis and a couple just um, regular herb and garlic ones. So that's where a little bit of my olive oil can go into the dish. Now you don't need a, a ton, uh, but you do wanna make sure that each piece of um, bread gets covered with a little bit. So get a basting brush, Use, um, you know, you can use the actual brushes or you can use those, um, they have like silicone ones that you can do as well. Um, so just make sure that you get enough to cover all of the top of the bread and we're gonna have to do both sides. I've got about half of them done. I'm just gonna use all of the oil here that I put in my little glass because you know what? I don't wanna do a ton of dishes. So now I'm gonna grab the other oil that I have and I wanted to do the spicy garlic for the other half. And remember, we need to do both sides of the crostini. So take your time and just go ahead. Oh, ooh, hello. That spicy one has a little zing to it. So just remember which side, if you need to mark it, which side you did the spicy and which side you did the lemon and herb because visually you're not gonna be able to tell. So if you have guests coming that don't like spicy, they're gonna get a little surprise because these oils, definitely when it says spicy, it's got zing in it. It is so delicious. So once you flip them around, make sure you do the other side. And that is it. You are ready to put these in the oven. I go about 400 degrees, leave them in there for about eight to 10 minutes until they get all crispy and then take them out. Let them cool in the pan before you serve them and they will be going with the next two recipes that I'm making. So let's throw these in the oven. Okay, up next, our second recipe. We will need those crostinis for this recipe, but let's get it started. Now, what goes beautifully with any meal. If you said cheese, then you know me. Yes, cheese. 
So what I'm gonna do is with this whole theme of olive oils and beautiful balsamics, we're gonna do an appetizer with a burrata. So when you buy burrata, it comes, I just kept it in the fridge, it comes in a package. I've already drained the liquid that was in there and then you're left with this beautiful, beautiful fresh um, cheese. If you've never had burrata before, I highly recommend you source it out and get it. Be gentle with it because it does have a creamy center. So what I do, I just take it out of the package, drain the liquid and put it in the center of a nice charcuterie type board or wood um, because presentation is everything, it's beautiful. So um, I'm gonna cut into this later so you can see how delicious it is, but it's gonna pair perfectly with what we're making today. I told you I'm having a little dinner party, so I'm pulling out all the stops. Plus, because we're getting into the holiday season right now, and I want you to go check out ONV Tasting Room for some of your holiday gifts, I've kind of themed it so that all of our ingredients are red and green, red and green, red and green. So my burrata is sitting, it's beautiful, it's ready to go. Um, now I'm gonna, when the crostinis are ready, I'm gonna put some of those on there as well, but it pairs perfectly with tomato. It's kind of like bocaccini and tomato and basil and all those flavors. So for this, we're gonna want some fresh basil. We're gonna want some tomatoes. I've got all a, a huge variety of different colors of tomatoes. They're all gonna have different textures and flavors, but I think it'll kind of look beautiful on the board when we put it all together. I like to add a little bit of cucumber as well. I did not get a chance to slice these, so I'm just gonna do a couple slices of cucumber as well. See my red and green theme going on here? Uh, I mean, if you wanted to serve it with other vegetables or just with like crostinis and uh, crostinis and cheese. I mean, that's fine too. I just like a lot of color and I like the nutrients of eating vegetables too. <laughs> I know I love vegetables. Okay, so we've got some tomatoes. I'm gonna just pick a bunch of different tomatoes as well and give them kind of a slice in half. Um, just so that not only do we have smaller bites to take, but also I want the presentation to look really nice because when I have people over for dinner, I want them to be impressed. That's the foodie in me. And if you uh, have some larger tomatoes, like I've got these cocktail tomatoes, just cut them in um, a little bit of smaller pieces. The other ones I just did in half because that will be bite size. Now guys, I wish you could smell it in here. Those crostinis are baking in the oven and you can smell the olive oil because they're infused with those flavors, the garlic. Oh my gosh. it. Like I'm salivating because I'm getting so hungry. These olive oils are so amazing. I can't wait for you guys to try them. Okay, back to recipe number two because we do need to wait for those to come out and, um, and cool before we serve them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of start dressing my board here. And I mean, do whatever you want, but I like obviously the aesthetics of food. Um, so I'm kind of, gonna do a couple cucumbers kind of all together in bunches and then I'll put some tomatoes and don't forget leave room for some crostinis right because we want to put those on the plate as well but there's also a reason we're doing it in this order because as you may have noticed I have not used the olive oil yet in this plating and oh make sure you get like yellow tomatoes and red tomatoes kind of all in different spots. It's already looking so beautiful, and like I said, it's kind of holiday-ish with the green and the red and the burrata with the white. Oh, I'm so excited. So, before we put the crostinis on to finish this appetizer, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my, where is it, where is it? I have to read the labels. Ah, I'm gonna get my garlic and basil uh, olive oil and I'm gonna drizzle it not only on the burrata, but also on some of the vegetables So go gentle because you want to make sure that you make it pretty actually, you know what? I'm gonna bring this over here and Hopefully you can See the drizzle happen. Let me move this out of the way All right, here we go. So watch for the oil to come out gentle. This is so beautiful. 
and you can smell the garlic and the basil in this olive oil come out. I mean, the aromatics of this stuff is so amazing. Oh, this is so much fun. I think my guests are gonna love this so much. Now, I'm not done yet. I do want a little bit of fresh basil. I'm gonna roll it kind of like a cigar because I kind of want really small pieces. So I'm just gonna kind of cut it like this. And then I'm gonna have kind of little pieces I can put onto here for decor. Okay. So before, again, one more step. I do like pepper on my burrata and I also, again, think it looks really pretty. You can also serve it with salt and pepper on the side when you're presenting this dish. Um, I actually love putting a little bit of salt on every bite. I love salt. Um, if you don't do that, then this is perfect, but we will cut into that burrata shortly and I will show you exactly what it looks like. So my crostinis did come out perfectly. So now this is where you can finish off your burrata plate by adding crostinis right onto your platter. And then you just bring it out and serve it. And look, these are perfect. They're cr nice and crunchy and crispy. You're gonna get that those vegetables and that creamy cheese on top of these. I am so tempted to take a bite. Oh my gosh, I have to wait a little while longer before guests arrive. And then you've got this beautiful looking appetizer all set to go. So we can set that aside. I can kind of stare at it and keep drooling as we make our next recipe. So for the next recipe, I'm super excited because again, we're gonna use the crostinis that we made, but we're gonna make a fresh bruschetta that you can put on top of those. All right, so let's get started. Now I'm gonna have a bowl where I can actually do my mixing and a bowl where I'm gonna have um, the bruschetta served in. And then I like using the bowls with the lids because anything left over you can throw in the refrigerator and then top up as you need for um, your party, event, whatever. So use whatever tomatoes you want. I'm gonna use um, one Roma tomato, a bunch of these other colorful tomatoes, and you just wanna dice it all up into small little pieces so that it's kind of like that consistency you can scoop as a dip. So use any and all types of tomatoes that you would like. Just make sure that they are a very fine dice for bruschetta. What else do we need for bruschetta besides tomatoes? Well, let me tell you, this is a cooking show, so I guess I kind of have to tell you, don't I? <laughs> let me just finish up this last little bit of tomato and get it in here. Okay, so... We've got lots of tomatoes. I've threw some of those juices in there as well. Works perfectly. The next thing I wanna do is uh, put in some garlic. So I'm just gonna cut the little ends off. And I like using a garlic press. Um, you can chop it up and put it, make it into fine little pieces if you'd like. Uh, but I don't wanna eat a whole clove of garlic while I'm eating my bruschetta. So I like the garlic press. And I'm gonna go ahead for the amount of tomatoes that I'm using with this, I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, two garlic cloves in here. Again, more, less, whatever you want. Um, it's gonna be a beautiful aroma and beautiful taste with that garlic in there. So I'm gonna go with two today. All right, so far so good. We've got garlic, we've got tomatoes. I would also like to throw in some red onion. Now, I want this super finely diced as well. You don't want big chunks of onion in your mouth uh, when you're eating bruschetta, but you do want that flavor and you do want that color. You can kind of give it a little bit of a stir so far. Make sure all those flavors are coming together. It's really good to let bruschetta sit in the fridge for a little bit too before you serve it so that it can kind of start um, fusing together. Is that a word? Fusing together. I'm gonna add my pepper in now and a little bit of salt as well. It's gonna kind of take some of the, more of that moisture out of the tomato. Ooh, it smells good already, but here comes the best part. We are going to add some basil and garlic infused olive oil. 
So again, I don't measure, just drizzle a bunch in there, however you feel it will look good. And here comes the balsamic vinegar, because you want some of that in there too. Whoop, let me hold the bottle the right way and drizzle some of that Woo! And I love how this is a little bit thicker. Um, it is their traditional dark vinegar, um, but it is rich and it's a little bit of a thicker consistency. And I want to add that in there as well. Woo, woo, woo. It is looking pretty, but remember I said I'm going with this whole green and red theme for this whole dinner just because I'm starting to get into the holiday spirit? Well, yeah, let's throw in some fresh basil as well. But that is it for a homemade bruschetta. You want tomatoes, you want your balsamic, you want your olive oil. The infused olive oils are wonderful because it's even more flavor. Some red onion, fresh basil and garlic in there, and you've got your bruschetta ready to go with your crostinis. I've set the burrata and the bruschetta into the fridge just to wait because this is gonna be the main course and I've got a little bit of time before my guests arrive to finish up, make it, prepare it, and then get changed and get ready so that I can enjoy the evening as well. The final recipe is gonna be kind of my version of a carbonara pasta. Again, the ingredients that you are gonna need for this, pretty simple, red and green peppers. And guys, I'm just gonna throw this into the pan here because we're gonna go over and cook it, but I might as well just get everything in the pan. I'm not one of those people that needs the pan to be hot before I start putting in ingredients. I'm gonna want some red onion as well. And again, it's gonna look a little bit like the holidays with the red and greens. You guys know I love my baked prosciutto. Typically in this type of a recipe, you would do um, bacon, or even a pancetta or something along those lines. But this is way less of a mess. And I make this, you know, a, a bunch at a time and just keep it in the fridge so it's always ready to go. Crispy little pieces. Mm. So I just want a whole bunch of, like even some of these are crispy and broken. I just want all of that broken up into tiny pieces and into the pan. Because we're gonna reheat it uh, with all the vegetables, but it's gonna stay crispy. It's not gonna lose that crunch. The ones that aren't as crispy, just run your knife over it. So I've got red and green peppers, red onions. We've got that prosciutto in there as well. And the last ingredient, you just gotta throw in a little bit of garlic on top there as well. So now the final part is that we need our olive oil. So don't be shy. Drizzle that stuff into the pan because we're going to cook all of that down and then we're going to throw in some pasta. So on medium high heat, you're going to start cooking down all of these vegetables and onions. Mix around all of those ingredients and let it all cook down. It's going to take a couple of minutes uh, because you want those onions to kind of get soft and all of those uh, peppers to get soft as well. Make sure that you've put enough olive oil in there so that everything is coated and it helps cook. It smells amazing already. Oh, this is gonna be really good. I'm really excited. This is a good opportunity for you, if you haven't already, to boil some water, add some salt, and make your spaghetti noodles. I did that ahead of time because I know you guys know how to boil in salt water. Come on. Now, I wanna make sure that I have tons of olive oil in there because it's gonna need to coat all of the noodles. So if you don't have enough, put a little bit more in, but now you can start dropping your noodles in and turn your heat down just a little bit lower so that your noodles don't cook too hard. So I know I have enough olive oil on the bottom, but now that we're adding noodles in, I wanna make sure that they all get coated as well. So oh, let me add, I'm having people over for dinner, so I gotta make a few scoops, and I'm losing some noodles too. <laughs> this is very elegant. So you've added those noodles in, and you can go ahead and start stirring all of the ingredients together. Now this is where you'll know if you have enough olive oil, if you need to add a little bit more. Now I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more oil here. I feel like that'll do the trick. Let's mix that around again. So your noodles are already cooked. Your 
really just warming it all up now and making this all go together. The step before serving this is that we're gonna add an egg into this. So I put the egg in here. Actually, there's two steps, I lied. I also wanna add cheese. Um, so I just put an egg in a little bowl and kind of mixed it with my fork just to break it all apart. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it in, but you've gotta be a little bit vigorous because you don't want a fried egg in there. You gotta stir it pretty vigorously. So you're on medium heat now because you've turned it down a little, and here we go. So what I like to do is I like to make a little bit of uh, a little bit of like a little hole in the middle because that's where I'm gonna put my egg, and then I'm gonna stir vigorously. So here we go. The egg goes in. And don't let it cook too much. And stir, stir, stir. You want to add some cheese and par Parmesan flakes. And we're going to mix that in there so it melts. But keep some so that you have some to top it with. All right, guys. We are going to plate the beautiful pasta we just made. Oh, it is perfect. I'm so excited to serve this. Make a nice little mountain like that. You know you gotta garnish it with a little extra cheese. Let's put two pieces of cheese. A nice fresh piece of basil if you want, just for decor. Add a tiny drizzle of olive oil if you want just to make it beautiful and pretty. And there you have it, pasta carbonara. You've got bruschetta, you've got a burrata on a beautiful spread with homemade crostinis, all using o &V tasting room olive oil and balsamic vinegar. I hope that you've stayed to watch the entire episode because I have a surprise for you guys. The amazing folks over at o &V tasting room have decided to give away two bottles of their extra virgin olive oil and you get to choose which flavors you want. So if you head over to The Silly Kitchen on Instagram, the instructions are over there on how to enter this contest. It's gonna be a giveaway for one lucky winner. I'm so excited because whoever wins this is gonna get to go to the store and see all the beautiful things that they have and taste all the olive oils and you're gonna love it. So head over there and uh, good luck. I hope you enjoyed another episode of The Silly Kitchen. I always have to finish the show with trying what I've made. Oh my gosh, so much flavor. It's okay if you slurp your noodles, just not in front of guests. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again.